Ready. One, two, step. <laughs> that step back doesn't look good though. It doesn't. One of the challenges that we had making Scranton, uh, we had a very, very, very low budget to work with. And with that low budget, what we wanted to do was make a good professional looking product that looked like it looked like you'd be going to a movie and watching an actual movie in a movie house <clears throat> where the quality is that good and the effects are are believable enough that it, that it works within the, the movie itself. So one, so that is a challenge that we had was to make things look real on such a low budget. We didn't have quite a budget to make things look all big computery and fancy. So we used some uh, kind of small computer programs to do some of the digital effects, and uh, use some uh, some practical ideas to and uh, quite mechanical and technical ideas to make <coughs> uh, some of the visual effects look really good. And uh, we had some uh, some people working with us that uh, did, did a great job, uh, that, that had a that had a great mind, and they were able to come up with with ideas that would look good uh, when, when we were shooting this stuff that would look good on the screen. And uh, some of the things you're going to be seeing coming up here are some examples of of things that we've done to to create that effect. When Channing first came to me, uh, approached me to do some special effects work on his movie, uh, he wanted some squib work, which is exploding chest, you know, when they get shot by a gun and you got this blood blowing out of your chest. Well, we looked it up on the internet and we found some, uh, they used um, the pump spray things for doing pesticide and you run a hose around and you shoot it out the chest through a little incision on the, uh, in the shirt. And uh, I didn't think that was going to be appropriate and there's no way we could do effects work like they do in Hollywood so we had to kind of go a little bit more ground level so we ended up trying to do some different things uh, first of all I built this thing here what it is we filled this balloon up with blood and then from the blood we have a little trigger here and it's under your shirt we cut the shirt with a razor blade really finely and then we put a little curl syrup on it and we stick the shirt right to it and then this goes out the guy's under his shirt. This is the trigger. And as uh, the guy shoots, we pull this trigger and blood shoots out the front, which worked pretty good. And here's a, a clip that we did just to test it. That worked pretty good, except we had this string now, everybody's pulling, and that didn't look good, and, and Channing thought he could paint it out in commotion or something, but I said, well, let's try another alternative. I know I can come up with something better, and so I was thinking about how they ignite stuff. When they do the squibs, they have like a little charge that they shoot off, and it explodes, and so I thought, let's try something like that, but the uh, only thing we had was I had a rocket launcher from an Estes rocket. I had a rocket launcher from an Estes rocket, and so what we did was we took a mayonnaise jar lid, basically like this, filled the balloon up with blood, and then we put a firecracker, small firecracker underneath it, cut the fuse, dug it out a little bit, shoved the charge in that you use to, rock, to ignite the rockets, and then you could push the button, it set off the firecracker and blew the balloon apart, which caused a far better effect, and plus it protected the person because of the coating of the uh, lid. And uh, that's the route we went after that. And it seemed to be a great alternative to the squibs used in Hollywood. This, this is one of the uh, practice. This is when we were testing the squibs. This is when somebody gets shot at something exploding that's attached to the person, so it makes it gives the effect that they're being shot by a gun or something. And uh, we, we tried this several times. This is actually myself here being shot several times. We finally mastered this the squib and uh, with the help of firecrackers and which really gave a, a good effect of, uh, of being shot. Tons of fun.
so with the firecracker effect uh, and the balloon exploding out you really get a good feel of the, the blood you can see that light lighting up the balloon right there the firecracker lights up on that frame and it and then the blood becomes spraying out of the out of the balloon there when the firecracker explodes aside from the practical effects uh, we did some digital effects we were using a real shotgun that wasn't loaded so we'd uh, tell the actors to act like they were shooting and then uh, and act like the gun was bucking them then we would draw in uh, the flare on the on the shotgun this is a pretty crude uh, display here what, what we actually did uh, we made it look quite a bit better than this but this is just kind of an explanation we'd go through frame by frame and paint each frame uh, on the shotgun <clears throat> to make it look like a flare was coming off. So the gun was actually never fired, it was never loaded. Uh, another uh, digital effect we did was uh, this guy being thrown back when he was shot, and Ray being thrown back, and a couple people being thrown back. What we'd do, you can see there in the background, there's people pulling him back with a rope and a mattress on the ground. We'd uh, put what's called a rotospline around the image. That, within that box, within the lines there is what you see is what's going to be taken out. And then we took a still uh, shot of, of the frame <clears throat> with nobody, no mattress, no ropes, no people inside of it, and it composites what you see. It's inside that box right there. We make this little animation uh, around that person in that box. Everything will be be composited, making it look like there's no rope and no mattress and no people. You corn sucking monkey baby. So here's the whole effect right there of him getting you shot. All, all those baby. three shots together: the gun going off, the squib going off, and him flying back. And uh, this is another shot that we used uh, digital effects on. So when the guy's getting dragged, we want to make it look like John Woodhouse is effort effortlessly carrying, dragging this guy across, this big guy across the ground. So we used the same sort of effects. Uh, we, we took a still frame, as you see here, of nobody, no ropes, no people in it at all, to composite uh, the image where the where the rotospline box goes. So I make this rotospline box uh, circling around everything that's going to be deleted. <clears throat> then we create the animation once again. Uh, you have to move it a few frames ahead and uh, and reposition the rotospline, and then the computer figures out uh, everything else in between. And as we do that, you can see the animation moving here. Everything within that box is going to be deleted. Once again, this is kind of a crude uh, recreation of it, uh, showing what we did. You can really get touching, go in there and fix everything up so it looks really nice. And here's the actual uh, shot here, so everybody's taken out of it. And uh, we see him being dragged across as if he's dragging him and not a rope with three people dragging him. The music was one other thing we wanted to make uh, in, in the movie that would make the movie seem very original. So uh, Aaron Peterson, uh, musician, d did the music for us, and he did uh, some, some great stuff. I told him that he, we wanted kind of an eerie feel to it, so he did a lot of piano work, as you can see. He's, he strummed his fingers across the piano strings. He did effects of just like beating on the piano with his hands and uh, making kind of a hollow drum noise <clears throat> that really add a, a, added a creepy a creepiness to the, to, the, to the movie. I think it should stop right when he grabs me. Uh, you know what I mean? With that, I put a temporary music track in before he had so written the music, and then once I had gotten his music and put it in, it really uh, made the film feel a lot more original than it had had previously felt. Mm -hmm.